Ah, the ground type. One image comes to mind whenever you think of it. And that's the earthquake move. And seriously, who could blame you? The earthquake move is probably uh, the best non-drawback move in the entire game, considering it has 100 power and 100 accuracy. Seriously, I think, off the top of my head, only one other move has a damage out, has an average damage output in the triple digits while, while not having any drawback whatsoever, and that would be Fire Blast. And, you know, it's something that I thought of after uh, talking with one of you about it. I don't remember who it was. It was a few weeks ago, though. And it's that Generation 1 had really powerful offensive moves when you stop and think about it. You got the Club of Sir, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt with 95 power, 100 accuracy, and aside from Surf, a 10% chance of, a, of status. You don't see that often anymore, because usually when new moves are being introduced and they don't have any drawbacks, the usual bracket for the usable ones is going to be between 70 and 90. 90 at best. 95? I don't think we've seen that since, um... Generation 1, in fact. Um, Megahorn! I'm an idiot! Megahorn also has a, a damage output of uh, over 100 without having any drawbacks. And I'm sure some of you in the comments are going to tell me, Oh, you forgot about this move and that move. And yeah, there's Earthquake, Fire Blast, Megahorn, and uh, probably a few other ones. Um, y you know what? I if you think of any... I don't want to know, I can look it up myself, but the point is that there aren't very, very many moves ever since Generation 2 that are this powerful. Um, even if you take a look at what Generation 5 introduced, Generation 5 didn't introduce a whole lot of um, moves that were useful in a competitive context. Other than the legendary signature moves, there really isn't a whole lot to feast on. There are a few exceptions, though, but for the most part, um, on, on the move scene, it's fairly similar to uh, what it was in Generation 4. So, yeah, it seems like uh, the, the our moves are getting weaker and weaker as time goes on, actually. Though, to be fair, Generations 2 and 3 did introduce quite a few moves that filled interesting niches that weren't filled up to that point, such as, I've already mentioned Mega Horn, I guess like, I could also have like Signal Beam, uh, Blaze Kick, and um, other moves like that. Generations 2 and 3 had uh, quite a few of them. Generation 4 created a lot of new interesting moves because of the physical special split, and some types were left without a good move in either the physical or special spectrum. So, um, yeah, Generation 5 didn't have much of an excuse. Pretty much all the niche you can think of are filled, and there was one that was sort of lacking uh, before Generation 5, and if you ask me, it's still sort of lacking now. Physical Electric. Now, uh, a lot of people uh, of Pokémon, rather, learn Thunder Punch, but, uh, that, but that means you need to have hands to learn it. Otherwise, you're stuck with Spark. Such as, take for example Luxray, whose best move was freaking Spark. So they introduced Wild Charge, which was a move with 90 power, 100 accuracy, and 25% recoil damage for a 90 power move! Seriously, I'll be honest, Wild Charge should not have recoil. Even if it did even if it didn't have recoil, it would be a pretty good move, but it would be my by no means overpowered. So yeah, if you're a physical based electric type, unless your name is Pikachu or Raichu, in which case you have Vol Tackle, then you're pretty much screwed. This is the big complaint with, with uh, the likes of Electivire. Not enough power on the big moves to uh, use that attack stat properly. That and uh, the middling speed, but uh, the low power of the moves doesn't help either. So, yeah, I don't really know what my point was, except for maybe, you know, how the, uh, many of the best draw, uh, non-drawback moves 
were from Generation 1, such as the aforementioned, you know, the 95 Power Club. I guess you could also sort of include uh, Fire Blast and uh, Generation 1 Blizzard in there as well. I guess I should acknowledge that because that was one of the most broken moves in the history of Pokémon. Remember when Blizzard had 90 accuracy? Yeah! Those were good times! We're not having such good times anymore, do we? Now it has 70 accuracy, just like Thunder, so it needs weather to function. And unfortunately, said weather is a lot less functional than rain for Thunder. So yeah, it got robbed there. Now, I guess I should acknowledge uh, that puzzle that I'm doing right now, even though it's not really that much of a puzzle. It's, you know, it's another one of those so-called puzzles that is... You know, uh, it looks intimidating at first, you know, you're going up and down those, um, those elevators, but in fact, you really don't have too many ways to go thanks to those conveniently placed traffic cones and trainers. So yeah, it's one of those that isn't really a puzzle, it looks intimidating, but just keep going, just, and if you, if you really, really suck at puzzle solving even more than I do, then just keep banging your head uh, on the wall and you'll get through eventually. And by the way, I'm not talking about banging your head through the wall of the mine shaft because uh, I guess that would hurt a lot. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, this elevator looks a little bit more special than, than the others because it's actually safe. You don't look like you could fall off of it uh, at any minute, at least uh, when you're not going straight up or down. So yeah, this one leads straight to clay, and um, yeah, well, actually, looks fairly impressive, especially for a DS game. I like the looks of this place. So, it's now time for the fifth gym battle of this Let's Play against Clay, the ground type redneck. Quite frankly, I'm not too worried about that fight, even the Excadrill, even though, you know, I... I have a earthquake on my uh, no dig sorry on my own excadrill, but I'm not really feeling confident in uh, in uh, pulling off an excadrill mirror match, especially since I think he's got earthquake and I don't. So anyway, Giga Drain on his lead, Crocorock. Oh, here's your diagnosis. It appears your Crocorock is suffering from a slight case of dead. And here's excadrill, his ace right away. So let's try Giga Drain. How much damage is it going to do? I don't expect a one-hit KO because it's going to be neutral. And oh wow, critical hit! Timely critical hit. Awesome. One-hit KO on Excadrill. So only Palpitoad is left. And you know what? I'm really going to humiliate this guy. I'm going to go with Magical Leaf instead of Giga Drain. I mean, quadruple weakness means, yeah, that. Hold on, wait a second! Are we seeing his underwear under his legs? Maybe I saw wrong, but why is that spot a different color than the rest? That is not very fashionable, if you ask me. So, um, we're going to get our fifth badge, as I was about to say before I got rudely interrupted by the sight of Clay's crotch. Don't ask me why I was looking at it in the first place! Don't ask! Do not even ask. So, we got the Quake Badge for our troubles. And I guess we are going to get a TM as well, which off the top of my head, I think it's Bulldoze? Uh, no, it's not Bulldoze! It's bullshit! Because, yes, he's allowing himself to boss us around some more. Just wonderful. So we're supposed to wait for him uh, at the entrance to the cave near Route 6, which is Charge Stone Cave, a cave that used to be infamous for its high encounter rate until players maddeningly discovered that there was another place in this game that had far higher encounter rates than a Charge Stone Cave did, and the traffic cone isn't there anymore, which I guess is convenient. So, uh, we're gonna have to make our way through Route 6 before we can meet up with Clay. Now, just give me a moment. I am going to change my lead since, uh, uh, Lilligant has been in there for a while and it's got quite a healthy experience lead, so I'm gonna go with Excadrill instead. Now, if you, if you go to the exit of Drivale City, right here, you get interrupted by Bianca! 
and it's a game, you know, where there's tons and tons of rival battles, mostly due to the fact that you have two of them, and, well, this is one of them, so, um, okay, uh, I can't get distracted being all impressed with your shiny new badge. Brave words for someone who has as much of an understanding of Pokémon as Todd Aiken has an understanding of the female body. Nonetheless, here we go, Bianca battle number I lost count. And she should lead with her dear as usual. So really, anything works against it, going with, with Excadrill since, well, it has all those handy resistances, especially against her dear's stab. So I'm gonna go with Dig since, well, it's still my strongest move, still no Earthquake, but now that I look at it, I'm very close to getting it, maybe even after taking down this Herdier. And oh wow, a critical hit! And again! So level 36, so yeah, I'm going to learn Earthquake! And it's worth repeating at this point! Where is your god now? Heck yeah! Now, as I said before, Earthquake is a marginal improvement over Dig, but it's still very handy. So, for Duwat, I'm going to be sending out Lilligant, even though it's, uh, cl it's very close to a level, so I might as well have it gain that level. Not expecting Duwat to uh, live from this. By the way, am I the only one who thinks Duwat looks infinitely cooler than Samurott? Surely I can't be the only one here. Panseer, I'm getting Lilligant out of there and I'm gonna send back Excadrill instead. Hmm, which one should I use? Earthquake or Rock Slide? Earthquake or Rock Slide? Earthquake or Rock Slide? Fuck it! I'm going all out, Earthquake. More power, more accuracy, more OPness, more overkill, which I always like. There's nothing quite like overkill. Now, Musharna, I'm going to keep Excadrill in there, and I'm going to go with Earthquake, obviously, because uh, that thing's actually fairly bulky, even though I have a huge level advantage, and no, it does not have, in fact, Levitate. It would have been so much better if it had Levitate, but instead, make way for crap like Forewarn and shit, and Telepathy, and God! This thing could have been so much better than it was, but instead they decided to make it a second rage Ryu Nicholas in every possible way. So, um, now that we've beaten Bianca, we're actually going to get a very cool reward that I have been looking forward to for a long, long time. And it is the Fly HM! So this means that this ducklet that I caught earlier is finally going to come in handy! And, yeah, um, apparently she got it from her father? I'm sure it's so I can come home anytime he wants, though. Yeah, <laughs> I think you got that right, then. I have to share this with Sharon? So wait, did he give you three copies of the HM, or two, or whatever? I don't know how that works, but uh, either way, not complaining, I can now fly around. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take out um, that uh, ducklet from earlier, and I'm going to put it in my, in my party, teach it fly, and after that I'm going to head back to uh, Nuvima Town, as I said before, because uh, Professor Juniper is going to hand you a bunch of TMs, depending on how many Pokémon you've seen in your Pokédex. At least I think it's seen. Yeah, it's probably seen, because these days every, but everything goes by seen Pokémon, except for a few distinct rewards in Black and White 2. So let's get rid of, I guess, Aerial Ace. Because there's no real point in keeping it when you can teach it fly, at least in-game. I know Aerial Ace is a lot better competitively, even though it's not all that good there anyway. So, let's fly in this LP for the very first time. Definitely not the last. We're gonna head back to New Vima Town to get some new TMs. And after that, we're gonna head back to Nimbasa City to check out the big stadium in the small court and start exploring Route 6. So I'll see you in the next video!